Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. We'll get this cranial nerve party, I mean, series, started with the first two cranial nerves, the olfactory nerve, sensing smell, and the optic nerve, sensing sight. Remember that both of these nerves are considered part of the central nervous system, not the peripheral nervous system. So we're joining Odin and his owl in his study to whip up some magic. Odin's majestic staff that looks like a number one should remind you that the olfactory nerve is cranial nerve one. It senses smell. And that's all it does. So take a big whiff of... Uh, whatever is wafting out of that cauldron, just like Odin's doing with his big ol' sniffer... Wow, he's really getting in there. That's right. A nice deep breath in of that unknown and potentially lethal substance. Real smart. It's considered a special sense because it's associated with a specialized organ, the nose, as opposed to a general sense like touch. So we've given Odie here this grand, special-looking feather to symbolize it. The olfactory nerve starts where you smell things, in the nose. Specialized sensory cells in the roof of the nose, called bipolar cells, project rootlets composed of their central processes up through the perforations in the cribriform plate, like these perforations on Loki's crib, located in the ethmoid bone. Something about those words, cribriform and ethmoid, just laughable. <laughs> it's like Bibi Loki is finding his ethics book quite hilarious. <laughs> you sneaky, unethical little rascal. These rootlets then synapse on the olfactory bulb, which then send signals directly to the brain via the olfactory tract. If the cranial nerve loses function, well, then the patient loses the ability to smell things called anosmia, which I would hope makes sense. Or I guess not, because it's sentis. <laughs> but they might interpret this as a loss of taste, since most flavor of food comes from its smell other than the five major taste categories of sweet, salty, bitter, sour, and umami. But at least they'd have no trouble tasting this, uh, delectable-looking tasteless gruel. This would also make it difficult to detect odorous poisons that someone has slipped into said tasteless gruel as well. When we talk about why the nerve loses function, we have to return to those teeny-tiny fragile rootlets. So we'll turn our attention to this tapestry depicting a tragedy. With acceleration or deceleration forces, the brain is loose and moves around in the skull, and this can cause traumatic brain injury. The olfactory bulb is part of the brain, so it moves around too, but unfortunately, the bone, of course, doesn't move, so that those fragile little rootlets poking through the bone are sheared or evolved off, and the sense of smell is lost. Meanwhile, Odin's solution to his poison dilemma is a taste tester. So this poor dwarf is trying his best to stomach this utterly bland gruel, which is made with water, not milk, for extra flavorlessness. And I'm sure is contributing to the poor dwarf's inability to keep it down. So it's come shooting out his nose. Ugh. <laughs> 